One of the biggest challenges of empirical studies, especially those that try to determine which factors increase the chance of something good or bad happening, is to get data which are representative of the relevant population. If we don't, we can end up with flawed conclusions like students who skip lectures are more likely to get better grades, attractive people are more likely to be nasty, and smokers are less likely to get COVID-19. These are all examples of collider bias, or Bergson's paradox, that I'll explain in this video. For simplicity, let's assume that students either attend regularly or mainly skip lectures. So every student is classified as, as fitting into one of these two categories. They either attend lectures or they don't attend lectures. Now similarly, let's assume they either get good grades or they don't get good grades. Now, in reality, we know that students who skip lectures are less likely to get good grades, but we want to show this empirically. So we survey students through the University Online Forum. The problem with this is that those who are unengaged, meaning those who don't attend lectures and get poor grades, are the ones who are unlikely to respond. So who is it responds? Well, very few of these. More of these. So students who either attend lectures or, go, or get good grades, but not necessarily both. And lots of these, most of these, people who, are, who attend lectures and get good grades. So the problem is that these unengaged students are mainly censored out of the data. And this means that most students who don't attend lectures but respond to the forum get good grades. Now let's make this even more explicit. Here is the full set of students. We've got the students who attend and get good grades. We get the students who attend and get poor grades, not as many as them. We've got the students who skip lectures and get good grades. And we get the students who skip lectures and get poor grades. So what we can see is if we focus on the students who skip lectures, most of those who skip lectures get poor grades. So that's the reality. Okay, but... If we focus only on the students who complete the forum survey, we can see that, again, most of those who attend and get good grades are still there. They complete the survey. About half of those who skip lectures and get good grades, and half of those who attend lectures and get poor grades do the forum. But very few of those who skip lectures and get poor grades complete the forum survey. So most of these who skip lectures get good grades. And there you see the problem. That's who you're surveying. Now, assuming we can estimate the probability of a student responding, we can use the bias sample data to determine the true population. So suppose that those who respond, call those R, those who attend lectures, call those A's, and those who get a good grade, call them G. We can estimate, let's say, the probability that they'll respond if they're both a good student and attend lecture, is 0.9, 90%. That's in here. The probability that they respond if, if they don't attend lectures, they, if they don't get good grades, it's very low, that's 10%, and 50% for these. Now we can actually look at the responses. That's what we actually observe. And let's suppose that these are the numbers we get. Then we can get the true totals simply by using this information and these observations. So the number of students who get good grades and attend lectures is 300 because we know that that 270 was 0.9 of the true total. And this 27 who didn't attend lectures and didn't get good grades was only 10% of the true total. So there are 270 of those in total. And from that, we can see that the true total therefore sums to 1,000. You can get these probabilities and from these, we also get these probabilities. So the, so the probability of students attending lectures is point, just over 0.5, and the probability of them not attending lectures is therefore just under 0.5. And from these, we can just calculate the true conditional probabilities. So the probability of G given A is just, of course, that formula. And we simply now plug in these values, and we get the probability of G given A is close to 0 0.6. And similarly, the probability of G given not A is about 0.46. Okay, so here is the model laid out as a causal Bayesian network. And what you can see is that in this node here, 
if we look at the probability table for that, it's specified exactly according to our estimates. So the students who get good grades and attend lectures, well, 90% of those will be in the forum poll and only 10% of those who don't get good grades and don't attend lectures will be in there. And these others have a 50-50 chance of being in there. And all I've done for this node here, the probability of a good grade given attending lectures, is I have simply now entered those values that we learnt from the empirical study. So what we can see if we look at the prior marginal probabilities here is that we actually know about 51% of the students participate in the poll. Now, if they don't attend lectures, there's a 45.8% probability that they get a good grade, whereas if they do attend lectures, as we know, there's a 59.8. So that simply reflects what we encoded from the data. So overall, attending lectures leads to better grades. However, if we now constrain the model to those who have completed the poll, so this is basically what we get if we only looked at the poll results. So first of all, notice that most of those who completed the poll are people who attended lectures and got got good grades, okay, we know that. But now, with this constrained study, if we compare those who don't attend lectures, about 81% of those get a good grade, whereas those who do attend lectures, 72.8% of those get a good grade. So you can see that if we're fooled into thinking that the respondents to the poll are representative of the whole population, then we've got the collider bias and we get the exact opposite of the true result. Namely, if you skip lectures, you're more likely to get a good grade. Okay, here's another example of collider bias or Bergson's paradox. Why is it that most people believe that attractive people are more likely to be mean than nice? Well, basically, let's assume that people are classified by their looks as either attractive or not attractive. And let's suppose that their personality is either nice or mean. Now, the problem is that you will generally date somebody for either their looks or their personality, at least one of them. So the people that you might date are, well, if you're very lucky, you'll be able to in your lifetime date a small number of attractive, nice people. You'll date lots of attractive and not nice people and lots of unattractive but nice people. The people you generally will not date, very rarely, will be the unattractive and mean people. So the people you date who are attractive, which are these guys here, are more likely to be mean than nice. And therefore, positive association between being attractive and mean is, is just an illusion. It's just because mean people are underrepresented in the sample of people that you date. Let's just suppose in reality that there's an equal number of attractive and mean people, attractive and nice people, unattractive and nice people, and unattractive and mean people. So there is, that represents the reality, there is no association between attractiveness and meanness. Now, as far as who you might date are concerned, there'll be some of those, there'll be some of those, very few of those, because you're not going to be that lucky, maybe one of those, very, very rare. And these are the attractive people that you date. And so therefore, that's your perception of the set of attractive people. And of course, most of those are mean, and hence you get the paradox. The final example is this result, whereby it seems non-smokers are more at risk of COVID-19 than smokers. So again, we have people classified as either smokers or non-smokers, having or not having COVID-19. The question is, is there any association between these? And in particular, is it the case that smokers are less likely to get COVID-19 than non-smokers? Well, the problem is that the empirical studies on which the positive correlation between non-smoking and COVID-19 were discovered 
were based on a sample of people who were tested. And the problem is, who was tested? Well, it was mainly healthcare workers who tend not to smoke and people already suspected of having COVID-19. I mean, in many cases, they were hospitalised with severe symptoms. We had a few of these, people who were smokers and who didn't have COVID-19, not that many. We had quite a few of these, smokers who had COVID-19 and non-smokers who didn't have COVID-19. But the majority were non-smokers who had COVID-19. And so what you can see is that smokers with no COVID symptoms, these guys, were mainly censored out of the data. And of those who have COVID-19 in the sample, a disproportionate number are non-smokers. Hence, we get the collider bias and Bergson's paradox. And in conclusion, then, this paradox occurs when we rely on a data set which overrepresents some subjects and underrepresents others. And we end up concluding that the true causal relationship between two factors is the opposite of what is in reality the case. The case of the skipping lecture, we had a positive relationship in real terms between skipping lectures and getting poorer grades, but the Bergson paradox reversed that. And in the case of personality and looks and also smoking and COVID-19, the paradox simply led us to conclude that for two unrelated factors, one has a causal influence on the other. Now, the key thing is that by using a causal model that explicitly identifies the collider variable, we can overcome the paradox without having to get any new data, which is exactly what I showed you in the case of the students.